it is applicable to us Christians because we also have challenges in our lives. Wherever we are working, wherever we are employed, our boss comes and says, I am depending upon you to complete this work. How will you complete this work? If the presence of the Lord is there with you, you will accomplish that task. And the presence of the Lord will be with you when you are obedient to him. Are you all with me? Dear friends, just for the glory of God, I am sharing this recent experience of mine. Okay? For the glory of God. Not, no, I am not putting up my collar. We know that on Palm Sundays, we take out a church procession. Is it not? All of you did in some places? Yes or no? Palm Sunday procession we take out. Is it not? Yes, it's Pastor. Yes. yes, very good. So, in our area, the police were forbidding taking out of the procession during this Palm Sunday, recently which we celebrated, quoting the election code. They said election code has come, we will not give you permission. Many people went and approached the police station. Uh, the, the church people. They said, no, 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 no. We will not give permission for taking out the procession. Depending upon the Lord, I went <laughs> and met the assistant commissioner of police of my area. The Lord paved the way for success. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. He gave me permission immediately. And uh, that helped <laughs> in other churches also getting the permission. Are you all with me? Yes. Experiencing the Lord's power when we are obedient. His presence goes with us. And where His presence is, there is victory. Are you all with me? <laughs> so, I have walked with the Lord for 41 years. I have been in employment. I have been in private sector. I have been in public sector. I have been, I have been working under uh, different kinds of uh, bosses. They depended upon me. They knew I was a godly guy. And they would give me tasks. And depending upon the Lord, I would accomplish those tasks. And there were instances when I failed, when I was not 100% obedient. That also I have to admit. Are you all with me? So why is Bible study taking place? To apply the scriptural truths in our day-to-day -day Christian living. The methodology which we use for Bible study. First, observation. Second, interpretation. And third is application. Observation, what is written in the scriptures, we observe. Interpretation, we understand its meaning. Third, application. Only with this third step, the purpose behind Bible study is achieved. And what is the third step? The scriptural truths which we are learning on account of Bible study, we implement it in our day-to-day -day Christian lives. Are you all with me? So we have seen both the sides of the coin. <clears throat> A small Israeli army will win when the presence of the Lord is with them and when they are obedient. But when they are disobedient, even though they may be numerically be having a bigger army than their enemies, they are bound to face defeat. Are you all with me? So, let's go to the next slide. Let's go to the next slide. Brother Chandu? Brother Chandu? Brother Chandu is not there? Oh, ah, yeah, he's there. Brother Chandra, we are, ah, yeah, let's, uh, previous, previous, yeah. Now, let's come to the, after affirmation, exemption. See, uh, one thing is, listen to me very carefully. <clears throat> Israelites will win the war. Okay, Israelites will win the war. Now, there has been an incident also, uh, wherein we see, Israelites won without loss of a single soldier also in their battle. Uh, we'll look at that also. Uh, uh, Brother Chandra, let's go to the previous slide. Numbers chapter, Numbers chapter 31 verses 48 and 49. After I read this out, we'll come to uh, the second subtitle and that is exemption. Numbers chapter 31 verses 48 and 49. In one war, there was, there was not a loss of a, even a single soldier. Uh, please read it out, Sister Jaimala. Then the officers who were over the units of the army 
the commanders of thousands and commanders of hundreds, went to Moses and said to him, Your servants have counted the soldiers under our command, and not one is missing. <laughs> Hallelujah, praise the Lord. That is miracle of the miracles. See, Israel winning the war with a smaller army itself is a miracle. Not losing a single soldier is a miracle of the miracles. Okay, but now before we come to verses 5 to 9, uh, victory is assured for Israeli army. I'm going to ask you a question. But will there not be loss of at least a few souls, a few uh, men? Like when Israel went to war against the Ammonites, uh, the husband of Bathsheba, Uriah died, is it not? So I'm asking a question. Victory is guaranteed for the Israeli army. But will there not be loss of few men? Yes or no? Yes, yes, Pastor. Yes, yes, yes. yes. right on. So what is the exemption we are talking about? What is the exemption we are talking about? Verses 5 to 9. Brother Chandu, let's go to that slide and uh, Sister Jayamala will read it out for us. 5 to 9. Yeah, Deuteronomy 20, 20, 20 verses 20. 5 to 9. Yeah. The officer shall say to the army, Has anyone built a new house and not yet begun to live in it? Let him go home or he may die in battle and someone else may begin to live in it. Has anyone planted a vineyard and not begin to enjoy it? Let him go home or he may die in battle and someone else enjoy it. Brother Chandu, point, a, a, point a culture at the vineyard. <laughs> Israeli vineyards. This is straight from Israel, this picture which I picked up. Okay, Beautiful grapes, is it not? Ah. Then continue, sir. Verse 7. Has anyone become pledged to a woman and not married her? Let him go home or he may die in battle and someone else marry her. Then the officer shall add, is anyone afraid or faint-hearted? Let him go home so that his fellow soldiers will not become disheartened too. When the officers have finished speaking to the army, they shall appoint commanders over it. Thank you, sister. So, has anybody built a house and not yet dwelt in it? Has anybody planted a vineyard and not enjoyed the fruits thereof? Has anybody got engaged to, to a woman and not yet married her? there is an exemption. You need not participate in the war. You can go back to your home. And uh, let me tell you about the laws, okay, from Genesis to Deuteronomy. <clears throat> Listen to me very carefully. There is a law that the parents of the disobedient child or the disobedient son or the disobedient children, parents can bring them out into the open and ask the rest of the Jewish society to stone them Okay, listen to me very carefully. There is a law which says that the parents of very, very disobedient children can bring out the children and ask the rest of the members of the Jewish society to stone them. But in the entire Israeli history or the scriptural history, not once was that law used. <laughs> so now it's a matter of conjecture. Listen to me very carefully. As the Army captains are telling this, especially the last part. If any one of you is afraid, again I repeat, if any one of you is afraid to participate in the battle, go back home. Do you think anybody would have gone back home? Afraid. Okay. You have built a temp, you have built a house. Okay. You are um, engaged. Okay. You have planted a vineyard? Okay. But if any one of you is afraid, go back home. Do you think that would have been taken as an excuse for some of the Israelites to go back home? No. Give me an answer, no? <laughs> Unmute and give me an answer. I'm waiting. No, no. No. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Just as that law was never implemented. Disobedient children can be stoned. Parents never utilize that law. Similarly, those who believe in the Lord, those who are having trust in the Lord, who are participating in the war, they would never get faint-hearted. They would not go back home. Are you with me? That part may not have been fulfilled in the entire scriptural history of Israel. Yes? Those who have planted the vineyards, they may have gone back home. Those who have built their homes, they may have gone back home. Those who are engaged, they may have gone back home. But not out of 
cowardice, not out of timidity. Are you all with me? <laughs> That's why I'm going deep into the scriptures. So, let's go to the third slide. Uh, the third subheading. Uh, first is affirmation. Second is exemption. And uh, now let's come to the provision. Uh, see, when you are when Israelites were warring against those people who were outside the land of Canaan, listen to me very carefully. When Israelites, due to circumstances, whatever be the circumstances, were forced to fight against those people who were not within the land of Canaan, then what is the system to be used? before the war starts, okay? Let us look at that. Uh, let's go to that slide also, brother, Chandu. Let's go to that slide. What, what is on the left side? Tau. Tau symbolizes <laughs> peace. On the other side is a grenade, okay? A grenade is a weapon of war, okay? So what the Israelites should do when they are about to start war with a country or a city which is not in canon. Listen to me very carefully. Which is not in canon. Okay, now Sister um, Jaimala will read it out and Brother Chandu will be pointing a cursor at the right place at the right time. Okay? You turn me 20, 15 through 10, 10, to, 15, 15, 10, 10 to 15. 10 to 15. When you march up to attack a city, make its people an offer of peace. If they accept uh, an offer of faith, peace, so Brother Chandu point an arrow at the Tao. <laughs> yeah. If they accept and open their gates, all the people in it shall be subject to forced labor and shall work for you. If they refuse to make peace and they engage you in battle, lay siege to that city. When mm. the Lord your God delivers it into your hand, put to the sword all the men in it. As for the women, the children, the livestock and everything else in the city, you may take these as plunder for yourselves and you may use the plunder the Lord your God gives you from your enemies. This is how you are to treat all the cities that are at a distance from you and do not belong to the nations nearby. They do not belong to the land of Canaan. But when they are warring with the Canaanites, should there be an offer of peace first? No, says the Lord. Why? Let's go to that slide also. Now, look at the uh, detestable practices in the land of Canaan. Look at this man offering an infant baby huh, as a sacrifice to an idol. And you know that idol, I'm going a bit deep, okay? That idol will be made of brass. And that itself is under fire. Now, uh, uh, Chandu brother, point of fire under that idol. That brass would be so hot. Innocent infant who is placed into the hands of that idol. Imagine the pain that infant will experience. And get burned. Get charred to death. These were the detestable practices in canon before the Israelites conquered them. And when you come to Leviticus chapter 18, you know what is written? They had plunged to the abysmal depths of depravity in sinning. They were having sexual relationship with animals also. They were having sexual relationship with animals also. That is the extent of their depravity in sinning. So with the Canaanites, the Lord says, do not make any peace treaties because otherwise they will spoil you. Dear friends, I'm asking you a question before Sister uh, uh, Jaimala reads from verses 16 to 18. In this cursed world, in this cursed world, will good health spread or COVID-19 spreads? In this cursed world, will good health spread by way of contact or will COVID-19 get transmitted? COVID-19. COVID yes. Again, I'm asking you a question. In this cursed world, will gossip spread easily or the gospel? Gossip. 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 So when a holy man is living with an unholy man, 
chances of a holy man becoming unholy are more than an unholy man becoming holy. That is why Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, do not be yoked with unbelievers. Again, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, uh, do not be yoked with unbelievers. Are you all with me? And I'm going deep into this subject because I'm a pastor. I counsel youngsters, especially when it comes to marriage. And I quote the example of Charles Haddon Spurgeon, who was a Baptist pastor. You know, when youngsters would come to that pastor and say, I'm in love with this girl. She's an unbeliever now. I'm in love with this boy. She, he's an unbeliever now. But, you know, in due course of time, this unbeliever will become a believer. Permit me to marry. You know what Charles Haddon Spurgeon would do? He's a very practical person. He would stand, he would go up a table. He would stand on the table. He would make that youngster stand down below the table. He would extend his hand and say, I will try to pull you up and you try to pull me down. Let us see. Now give me an answer. A person who is standing on the table and extending his hand, will he get pulled down or will he be able to pull a person who is standing on the ground up? Give me an answer. He will be pulled down. down. He will get pulled down because there is gravity also acting against a person who is standing on atop the temple. Or sorry, atop the table. Are you with me? So here the Lord says, no peace offers. Because you are a dedicated nation for me and I am giving you a land which is dedicated for you alone. In the center of planet Earth. By seeing you, other Gentile nations should get attracted to me. And if you yourselves become defiled, you, my ambassadors, you, my representatives, become defiled, then my name gets blasphemed. So no peace treaty with the Canaanites. Now, sister, Jayamala, with this in background, please read Deuteronomy chapter 20, verses 16 to 18. However, in the cities of the nations, the Lord your God is giving you as an inheritance. Do not leave alive anything that breathes. Completely destroy them. The Hittites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Evites, and Jebusites, as the Lord your God has commanded you. Otherwise, they will teach you to follow all the detestable things they do in worshipping their gods, and you will sin against the Lord your God. When you lay siege to a city for a long time, fighting against it to capture it, do not destroy its trees by putting enough, an axe. Now we'll come to the last slide, okay? So, uh, Brother Chandra, let's go to the last slide. We are, uh, before we come to that, I'm telling you, <laughs> in the Bible itself, there are so many beautiful instructions. Uh, be before Chandu, brother, go back to the previous slide. Uh, there are so many beautiful instructions in the Bible. So much so that if you look into the Bible, there is no need for any uh, <laughs> societal pressure to mend the wrong ways. I repeat, there is no need for any governmental pressure to mend the wrong ways, you know, to avoid AIDS. What is the usual poster put in the roadside to avoid AIDS? Be faithful to your partner. Be faithful to your spouse. Governmental huh, signages, governmental slogans on the roadside. It's not the Bible teaching from thousands of years do not commit adultery. Yes or no? Now government is telling through its signages and slogans by the roadside, be faithful to your partner. Why? To avoid AIDS. Has not God, has not Bible been teaching about uh, faithfulness to a spouse through thousands of years? Yes or no? Give me an answer. No? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes. 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 And now government says Preserve trees. Preserve trees. What has Bible been teaching all along? Now let's come to that last portion of chapter 20. Sister, read it out. When you lay siege to a city for a long time, fighting against it to capture it, do not destroy its trees by putting an axe to them because you can eat their fruit. Do not cut them down. Are the trees people that you should besiege them 
However, you may cut down trees that you know are no fruit, not fruit trees and use them to build seas works until the city at war with you falls. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Look at the biblical instruction to save the trees. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Are you all with me? Dear friends, what governmental signages which we are seeing today. Be faithful to your partner. Avoid AIDS. Save trees. Save nature. Are the Bible has been teaching it for thousands of years. Are you all with me? Let us glorify God. Yes. Are you all with me? Yes, oh, dear friends. <clears throat> Amazing, is it not? Chapter 20, of book of Deuteronomy. God's word is sweeter than honey. Is it not? So, dear friends, <clears throat> again, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11. And Romans 15, 4. Why scripture has been written? To serve as a one and also to engender hope in us. I'll make a small closing prayer and Brother ben -Hur will lead us in a formal closing prayer. Father in heaven, once again, we praise and thank thee, O Lord, for this wonderful forum set up by the family of Brother Benoni Richards, whereby all of us are blessed, including this teacher. Lord, whatever lessons you have taught us today, Enable us not only to be hearers, but also doers. In Jesus' holy precious name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Brother Benha, 